a no-nonsense take on today's top stories, and everything you need to know for tomorrow. Newspoint. At its last National Executive Committee, the Social Democratic Front declared that it would not participate in any elections organized in Cameroon within the prevailing context, <coughs> and if the context kept on persisting. Now we are at the dusk of another one, one such congregation that held in Cameroon's uh, what some called political laboratory, Duala. And uh, there are some sticky points emerging. I'm flanked by my colleague Dominique Meme, and with, uh, with him we're going to put the chairman of the Social Democratic Front to our test. We're just asking the questions we think would make you uh, understand why this country is operating and heading towards the direction it is currently heading towards. Thanks for coming, Don. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Chairman, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you honoring us with your presence. No, thanks a lot. And uh, I appreciate the work people have been doing to investigate and expose to your viewers what is happening in our country. Okay. Because there are so many people in the midst of plenty living in ignorance. Okay. The Chairman, we'll find out from you after the National Executive Committee meeting that held in Tawana. What are some of the key points we can retain? Uh, we discussed quite a lot of uh, sensitive issues and uh, looking at the situation of our country, what we are going through. Uh, there's still killings in the north and southwest. There's still looting, abduction of people by both camps in the north and southwest. All these things are very disturbing. Uh, just a day before, the family of the first vice uh, president of the assembly was touched. The family of uh, a lady working the uh, the council they abducted her when we were here at the neck meeting. So all these things are still very disturbing that we, the, 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 the Cameroonians in general and Anglophones in particular are wedged between two evils. The, the government forces this way that are uh, ruthless. You have the Anglo, uh, Anglo, uh, Amazonian forces again that go maiming, uh, abducting. And uh, when I talk of abduction, you know how that the last abduction I had left scars on my body and uh, I was treated in the most humiliating way. And surprisingly, uh, the, the people abroad rejoiced and said we, are, uh, uh, we arrested Frundi to interview him. I think my age and what I've done in this country, and if they're talking today and some of them are talking abroad, are talking on my signature that I signed for asylum papers for them. And uh, they tell you that we arrested Frundi to uh, uh, interview him. I had gone over the media network to invite them that they should invite me for a meeting anywhere in the world. Yeah. I'll come for us to sit down, discuss, and agree, strategize on what to do. You don't fight a war to think that I have the strength I can uh, just beat anybody. The strongest boxer is one who practices how to box and not your size. And so, because they think they can give guns to people, they will run this around, intimidate people. These are some of the things we're looking and advising on. And when they in, uh, uh, abducted me the way they did, because they had the guns, I condemned this in very strong terms. Would you say, Chairman, that the separatist fighters are spoiling their case with uh, instances like the kidnaps your father has been twice in less than uh, six months? Now, the, what I want first to look at is that, or to agree, is that Anglophones have a problem. I've never deviated from this. We Anglophones have a problem. We've taken time to analyze and discuss these problems. And other voices have added on to uh, situate the Anglophone problem. But when in the Anglophone problem, you have now criminals who've infiltrated the struggle of the Anglophone problem to amputate people's arms, cut their fingers, cut their hands, cut legs, burn properties, abduct people, 
cut the heads. I know dismembering the bodies of a dead person has been done by both camps, but that is terribly inhuman. And when they abducted me, I told them in their camp that there's a Cameroonian, a, a, an Anglophone problem, but they should give the approach to this problem a face, a human face, to treat people as human beings and not as animals. Some would say you preach in the wilderness. Do you have the impression that they are very conscious? Of course, they heard. And most of them, I even invited them after they treated me the way they did. They came to my compound. And I told them, I still told them my mind. So, because I believe that if your child is getting out of hand, you as a father will not be tired trying to correct that child and put that child on the railings. Chairman, in one of the periods when you were adopted, they demanded you to influence representatives of the Social Democratic Front to withdraw from the National Assembly and the Senate. Have you been thinking about reconstructing that fact? Withdrawing the members of the SDF from the National Assembly is not a big problem. The CPDM Anglophones are more in the Assembly, more in Senate, more in Council than the SDF. So for me, calling the uh, SDF parliamentarians to come out is not a big problem. We have these meetings every day and we're looking at the issues that are affecting us together, both Francophones and Anglophones. And you'll agree with me as journalists that it's only the SDF that has regular meetings in this country to look at the national things that affect the whole country, to look at things that affect like the Anglophones, to look at things that affect the world because we're part of a living world. And uh, all these people, when we sit, we review and we tell ourselves if it were possible for all Anglophones in the Assembly, all Anglophones in uh, the Senate, all Anglophones in Council to come out at once. Despite their political coloration. That, that, despite their political coloration. That would be good for us. But you see, I address the people, the, the Cameroonians uh, in the international scene, giving instructions to the boys on the field here, as uh, members of the youth wing of the CPDM. Because their problem is on SDF, you leave parliament, SDF, you leave parliament. They've never at any one time, and I stand corrected, because you as journalists, you have better information, you've done more investigations than I've done, to tell me that you ever heard one time where a CPDM member of parliament was told to leave parliament. A CPDM member of Senate was told to leave Senate. A CPDM mayor is told to leave council. You see what the CPDM mayor is doing in Boya, in the heart of the Amazonians, and they're there hailing him. But they come to bring their guns, Frundi, we are standing here with these guns around you, telling you that you should tell your parliamentarians, senators, and councillors to leave the institutions within 24 hours. I told them that, look, my children, you are grandchildren to me. Look at my face. My face starts from here and ends where the hair is here. I had no cap then. And I will not want to remove my cap before the cameras. Otherwise, if you have a white cock to bring, I'll do that. <coughs> but I told them that that's where the difference is, that my face is from here to here and their faces end here. I'm a Democrat. For me to get my people out of parliament is not difficult. It's a matter of me going to discuss with them. We we'll look, strategize and see the effects of a pulling out of parliament. What effect will it be? It's not just pulling out of parliament to come and sit. Amazonians have told you to move out of parliament. I move, come and sit. Amazonians, what next? Sit there, we are coming. Give us money. And when they say that because we are in La Republic parliament, senate and uh, councils, they still hold those ten senators, parliamentarians, to get monies out of them. You've blocked women from going to the farm, you need food. You've destroyed all the businesses in the villages where you ought to have at least 500 francs to put your air time. And you abduct the people to, you don't know what to take from them again. So the struggle has missed 
direction. It means focus. Because you cannot be maltreating the people you want to protect, you want to liberate, you want to get out of a certain system. And you already show me that I'm in a hole, but behind the scene there is a, 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 a deep gorge valley. Rocks that I will slide on when I fall down to the end I will scatter. So let us sit down, talk, and uh, the Anglophone secessionist fighters, uh, um, uh, Democrats, and whatever, those talking of federation, federalist, let us give the Anglophone struggle a human face. Sympathy. Position paper statement rather from uh, the National Executive Committee released after the conclave in Douala. You pin blame squarely on President Paul Bia for having declared war on the English speaking Cameroonians in the Northwest and Southwest. Is he the one to bring an end to the, to the con conflict? Well, when you start a thing, you know how to bring it to an end. The driver who starts the vehicle and is driving knows when to stop the vehicle. It's not me to jump into the vehicle and uh, just, uh, halt the vehicle, bring the vehicle to a halt, even if it's driving towards a cliff. It's only the driver inside who has to. And uh, before this happened, you remember that we, Cameroon won a trophy in uh, the, the African Cup in Gabon. And when we went to the presidency for the, to, uh, to, the, for the, to receive the players and congratulate them, Mr. Bia shook my hand and was going. I dragged him back to me and said, Mr. President, this issue in the Northwest and Southwest that you are looking at it as light, I am afraid. Because when it started, I went to the field. And on the field, the boys stoned my car four times. When they stoned the car, I came and I said, what is it? Why are you stoning my car? They said, Pa, we didn't know that you are the one. And so, since if I were not the one, will you stone another car? Why? Go home, we want to die us. I said, look, if I go home for you to die, it means that I've accepted defeat. Because the struggle that I initiated and started was for you people. That's why I send the younger people to parliament, send the younger people to senate, send the younger people to councils. And I sit back to guide and direct and criticize what they're doing. Because the biggest critic on SDF parliamentarians, mayors, and senators is me. Because I come to you, I hear what you are saying, and I tell them that people are, they are not saying this, they, they don't feel comfortable with what you are doing this way. So, but if I'd gone in myself to say, look, I have to go to parliament, I must be vice president, I must be senator, I, I mean, a requester, I must be whatever, blah, blah, because of money. The struggle was not for money, the struggle was for the liberation of the Cameroonian people. That question still is on the agenda. Is this president of the year, is he the one who has the magic one? He declared, that's why I told you that a, a driver that starts the vehicle knows how to bring the vehicle to a stop. And it's Mr. Bia who declared the war. At one time in the Northwest, I was talking with the governor amongst people. I said, Mr. Bia declared this war. He is the one to call the war to a stop. The governor said, Mr. Chairman, you are saying that the president who declared the war? I say, oh, Mr. Governor, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. It's not the president, it's you who declared the war. He said, me, I say, yes, you, Mr. Governor. If you said it's not the president who declared the war, then who declared the war? And if I say it's you because they are fighting the war in your own constituency, in your own region, and the other region, who declared this war? Who sends the army out? Who sp sponsors the army out? Who buys equipment for the army? In 1990, when we launched the party, I have pictures of my house arrest where gendarmes came in simple this thing. There was only one gendarme with a, a, a helmet. But between 1990 to where we are, Mr. B has bought some of the most sophisticated equipment to fight a war. And yet, when the Boko Haram started in the far north, they pushed the Cameroonian army, and the Chadian army had to come in to help us. 
today we have the most sophisticated equipment using this to fight the taxpayers who gave you the tax money to protect them and their properties. We find ourselves being. In other words, so if money, now if 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 it's not Mr. Bia, he's seen pictures on the number of people killed, at least. He's seen pictures of most of the villages raised down to ashes. He's seen pictures of these gruesome things that are happening in the country. As head of state, what has he said? I still remember the statement that he struggled to talk Cameroon at one time, landing here, pop, 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 moving up. When he got to Yaoundé, in Yaoundé they gave him a spear and a, a cutlass. And he declared that if you want peace, be prepared for war. I told people that this man will fight a war. Chairman, from all indications, you want uh, President Pobia who declared the war to bring it to a halt. But as a main opposition political party in the country, Asia will not just fold her arms and watch the country going down the drain. What is the next step the Social Democratic Front is going to take to press the president to bring the war to an end? Well, the president is a hard nut to crack. He talks to himself and he doesn't listen to anybody. What else can we do? The SDF is the only political party that is holding regular meetings to study all these things, discuss, look at the international scene, the national scene, and issues that are around us. And if we're the only party doing this, I think that we are addressing the issues. We are calling on Cameroonians. For instance, the position paper, we called on members of uh, the, the, the Anglophones abroad to bring sanity into the thing. Because it suffices any uh, armed robber who has joined the cause and uh, forces people to recognize him as a, a general. I'm having a close down for five days. What for? Women cannot go to the market. Women cannot go to the farm. People can, they cannot do anything. And you see, when it started with an, uh, an Anglophone affair, Northwest, Southwest, but you in Douala, the economic capital, will agree with me that you are even feeling the pinch here more than we in the, at the war front because business is not moving. And not just business is not moving. The whole town is dilapidated. You need canoes to cross certain streets in Douala. So you think that we are happy? Is this uh, the society we vied for? Is this what we met? So... I think I charge Mr. Bia and his government for bad management. I stay on, on, on that question until in the bit, Chairman, because in that position paper it is mentioned clearly that if uh, a conducive environment is not uh, prepared for children to go back to school, uh, the parliamentarians and the senators from the SDF will boycott the November sessions. Is that a feasible way of uh, making your voice heard? No, we've done everything. We've begged. We've cajoled, we've explained, but you are hitting yourself on a rock. So why should I keep hitting my hands on the rock? I better leave him, let him do what he wants to do. You notice that uh, when elections are coming up in this country, for instance, the parliamentarian elections where he has a crushing majority in parliament, he said they want a crushing, wanted a crushing majority. They wanted, uh, they used all the terminologies. And of course, in the end, they rigged the elections and had the majority they wanted. Now, when uh, Cameroonians abroad say that as their parliamentarians should walk out of parliament is going to cause an earthquake and a break. Mr. Bia has over 60% of members of parliament. And with this, the constitution stipulates that if he has over 60%, he can run the parliament without the SDF. All the SDF parliamentarians can leave. All Anglophone parliamentarian senators can leave. But he, excuse me, he still has a comfortable majority to run his parliament. So, if, as we've called on both SDF and CPDM members to step out 
If they do this, that would be the beginning, beginning of a so solution to the Anglophone problem. Now, Chairman, in uh, the position, people who have listened, if the conditions are not met, parliamentarians and senators of the Social Democratic Front will, will pull out. Those are elective officials of the SDF. We have not mentioned, or we have not got <coughs> any uh, mention made about uh, councillors and the mayor of the Social Democratic Front at the grassroots. Are they equally going to withdraw? Okay, their offices and. Uh, please, I don't know whether a cow can go and leave its tail behind. Or a dog that has a tail is running. The tail, bushy tail is behind. Will the dog leave the tail behind? They go with their tails. They are going to withdraw too. Of course, it falls in line. Okay, okay I think we'll just move on uh, and find out from, from you, Chairman. Recently, you met with uh, Cardinal Christian <coughs> Tumi Emeritus, who has been championing a course for uh, <coughs> a national dialogue uh, pre-conference. Uh, what, what did you discuss? Well, uh, you know, Cardinal Tumi, you'll ask him what we discussed. We thought we should ask you first. No, you ask him. <laughs> yeah, he is uh, a clergy. And he's going his own methodically, inviting the elite. More people will attend to him than they will attend to me, because I'm a politician. And some of the people that do not belong to the SDF cannot come to me, if I said that. And so I didn't want to adulterate what he's doing. I just went to congratulate him and wish him well, and uh, also to offer my services that if anywhere along the line, they think that I can join for us to uh, uh, thing together, the SF is opened. But if we are jumped in from the onset, they will tell you that is the SDF in the hiding under the cardinal to do what they were doing. Well, re re recently, in a meeting organized by <coughs> Honorable Jean Shadi Kinti, Christian Cardinal Tumi at attended, and he made a declaration saying that uh, the assimilation of Anglophones by Francophones in Cameroon is now complete. Do you agree with that? Of course, what else are we? Tell me why you think they've not been assimilated. Is it complete, Chairman? Total. I'm actually just getting lost for words. Uh, when you say total, does it mean English-speaking Cameroonians are no longer Anglophones? Have they been transformed into Frank Francophones? No, the, the, the English Cameroonians have nothing to offer. They've been treated in a way that they think they're empty. They have nothing to offer. They're just passengers. There are neither motorboys, nor drivers, nor the, the conductors on the bus to take issue tickets. No, you're just a passenger. You sit where you reach. They say, get down, we get down. So I think that Anglophones want to be part and parcel of the country for us to work together on equal basis, reasoning together. And that's why you see the SDF both Anglophones and Francophones come t together to sit down, debate, and look at issues that are affecting the whole country in its totality, as they have had. Now, if you see a person like uh, Jean Jacques Kindi telling you now that he wants, uh, he's a federalist, he believes in federation, he's one of those who criticized the federal options that the SDF put before and said federation uh, tantamounted to secession. He said it. But when he saw the extremists come that we want secession, he said, no, he believes now, but in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a federation. And there are many Francophones <laughs> who've said that. So it's taken some people almost 30 years to see, realize, and understand what the SDF started preaching 30 years ago. We saw the Cameroonian problem, <clears throat> and we knew that these problems could only be solved through a federal system of governance. And that's why we proposed it. We never just proposed it. We came out with position papers on the federal approach. We came out with a, a federal constitution. And even when Mr. Bia formed the, uh, at the Trapartheid, when he formed the committee with Monzu, Elad, Anyangwe, Etwe, the rest of them to, uh, with a, uh, uh, Joseph Owona to uh, form a proposal constitution for Cameroon. They break off there just because the Francophones never wanted a federal system of government. 
So Anyangwe and the rest, they went, now wrote uh, a federal constitution, which was never looked into at all. And so, things started deteriorating from then up to where we are today. Chairman, would you, would you, you mentioned it a while ago because you said the Anglophone crisis has been transformed into a gold mine by hungry, uh, money hungry Camunians, uh, both within and without the country. Would you qualify someone like Zaza Kekindi as someone banking on the Anglophone crisis to fight in his wallet? Well, he is a politician. I will not want to describe him, but you journalists can interview him and make up your mind to classify him where you think you want to classify him, not me. Words, should he be a front runner in the search for solutions to the crisis? Can I don't know. I, I cannot t tell who should be a front runner. At one time, uh, Minister Garga came to Bamenda that uh, uh, President Bia sent him to come and look uh, at the Anglophone problem to propose him solutions. He went disappeared. And uh, others. So I don't, I, I will not qualify people. Cameroonians have been politically sensitized enough to know who is saying what and what is right. So you can judge for yourself. Chairman, 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 They've blocked all the avenues for a true, transparent, fair, clean, clear elections. They've blocked all this. So, where do you think? In 1992, I won the presidential elections, where we came up with the federal option and proposed it to Cameroonians. Cameroonians bought the idea, and they said, look, listen, what can save this country is uh, a federal system of governance. They blocked it. But you see, the Boko Haram has come in the north. The northwest and southwest are fighting because they think that they want some sort of autonomy. Uh, you had come to, he came now. The Bamliki say, no, we want it now. It's our turn. The northerners are saying that it's their turn. The Betis are saying we cannot give you. So the concoction to disintegrate and scatter Cameroon is overripe. It's, it's a good thing, uh, at least to me, that you mentioned uh, the MRC's uh, Maurice Campo, who is currently behind bars. Some have said that if you are done, why he <coughs> when you won the, when you won the elections in court back then in 1992, Cameroon would probably not be the same Cameroon. Yeah, you it regret that you didn't do the same thing? No, I don't regret. I'm happy I did what I did. And there and then I said, I don't want to get into power sliding on blood, trampling on corpses. We, you, you win elections to take care of people. And if you are a father who's not your children, I don't think that you want to see any child die because you want to be head of state. No, that's not fair. Chairman, we are three weeks close to three weeks to the start of the new school year 2019-2020. What is the position of the Social Democratic Front for course that schools should resume effectively the two and four regions of Cameroon? The SDF stands for the resumption of schools. We haven't gone further trying to print exercise books to send to these refugees, to send to the IDPs, to even give to those that are in the north and southwest, who braved it to stay back. But the cries we are having from the field are, for instance, that in Bamenda, when they said the students of Sekra should go back, they went. Soldiers were guiding the schools, they still, the school was still burnt. The same thing with PSS Batibo, the same thing with PSS Bafut. The same thing with uh, other uh, colleges in town, Secret in Se Sacred Heart. Now, if <clears throat> students were in school, and these schools were being guarded by soldiers, and the schools are still attacked and some of the structures burnt, 
You see, this brought panic. So that's why we've put in our position paper that Mr. Bia should take responsibility to call his troops out of the way. And then we'll all join our, face, our voices to call the Ambazonian forces out of the bushes where they are to make the conditions favorable and better for our children to go to school. Now, <coughs> excuse me, they still abduct children. They still abduct teachers. And some of the teachers abducted come with their hands maimed. So how can I talk to such a cheat teacher that please go back with one hand and see how you will manage? So until the fair conditions are met, proposed and put in place by the head of state. Because the Anglophones should believe that Mr. Bia is head of state. But if you prove between, between all uh, reasonable doubts that he is not the head of state of the Anglophone sector, then we'll be forced, like orphans, to take other dispositions. Chairman, we are reliably informed that you will be traveling out of the country. While out there, if you are given the opportunity to meet and talk with these Ambassador activists out there, what will you tell them? When I meet them, then I know what to tell them. Well, thank you sincerely, Chairman, for having shared part of this very precious time in our company. Thanks very much for giving us uh, the scoops as we should get them okay. after our conclave of the National Executive Committee. Thank you, Dominique, for having shared the panel with us. Thank you so much, Divine, and we're thanking the Chairman for granting this interview. Well, thanks a lot. You said I'm traveling, but other people who said I'm traveling were. Uh, 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 said I was, uh, that they said that I was escaping, I was running away. That the Northwest is too hot for me now and I'm running away. In fact, some that that's why the, the neck... No, 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 no. The SDF is the only socialist political party that holds neck meetings in Douala, in Bafusam, in Yaoundé. We've had our conventions here in Douala, in Yaoundé, in, uh, in the North Marwa, uh, and so on to embrace the country, to feel the touch of the people. So, and more so, with all the abductions, twice my sister, once my brother, twice all the animals, my compound in the village all raised down, my, the one in town, they set it on fire. I am still in Bamenda. Because there are people there that still have a absolute confidence and faith in me. So if I run, I'm, I'm leaving those people to who? We are there together. All right. I'm just going for a medical check. I've done all the checks, exhausted all the checks I could in bingo. But they hit my head with a gun about five times, boxed my stomach, and said, look at how large his stomach is. I don't know how large it is anywhere. But if my stomach is large at this stage, I think I merit it. I should not pre pretend to have a hungry look like you or the <laughs> gentleman standing there. I should now live a dignified life <laughs> to look good <laughs> and healthy. Going out for further medical attention, is that another failure that no hospital in the country can attend to you? No, it's not a failure. I trust my hospitals. You remember I had my surgery in Shishong. And I've had other follow-up treatments in the Baptist Hospital in Bingo. You have excellent doctors there and very good equipment. But as a local man, I'm a Christian, but I would not say that my father has never went to Ngambi. He goes to Ngambi, this Ngambi, he goes to that, he goes to that. So it's good. The children are abroad and they tell me, please come, let us see. Let me give them a chance to touch me too. Thanks very much, Chairman, for leaving us with smiles on our faces, and we wish you good luck and the best for the future. Uh, well, I pray God to let me have a good check and treatment if there's anything found, so that I should come back with brighter, uh, with, uh, wider smiles and brighter faces for us to continue the struggle. Thanks for today. Thanks, Dominique. Thank you, Dwight. Okay, so thanks a lot. We call it a wrap for this edition of Canal Do English Special. Thanks for having watched this one. Stay on with us because there's lots more tailored just to suit your taste. Bye-bye.
a no-nonsense take on today's top stories, and everything you need to know for tomorrow. Newspoint.